Hi, we're David and Marcy Lynn aboard our sailboat Nine of Cups and we're currently berthed in Adelaide, South Australia. Following is the second in a series of three videos that David has put together and this segment addresses the basics of soldering electronic components. We hope you find it helpful. The first thing we will do is strip and tin some stranded wire. It requires a gentle touch with the strippers. If you apply too much pressure, you will nick or break the wire. Not enough pressure and you won't remove the insulation. This is solid wire I'm stripping now. The technique is the same. It's very easy to nick the wire right at the point that the insulation was cut. Look at it closely and make sure it wasn't damaged. Next, I'm going to tin both wires. Hold the tip of the iron against the wire and heat it until the solder wicks into the strands of the wire. With the solid wire, the solder should coat the wire. Less is better. You can remove excess solder by heating the wire and giving it a sharp wrap against the tabletop. Now I'm going to solder one of the tinned wires onto a switch. Before soldering the wire, I want to make a good mechanical connection. I don't want the solder alone to hold the two parts together. I'll use my needle nose pliers to wrap the wire tightly around the terminal. You can see the wire is wrapped well enough to hold it in place while it is being soldered. To solder it, I first melt a little solder on the tip of the iron, then hold it against the terminal. I then touch the solder against the wire until it flows into the joint. Don't use too much solder. You want just enough to make a good connection. The solder joint looks good. At the end of this video, I'll show you some bad solder joints. Now I am going to solder a resistor onto a very simple circuit board. It has been pre-drilled to fit most components and has copper pads on one side only. When I mount the components on the board, I will put the component on the side without the copper so that the leads extend through to the side with the copper. First I need to bend or form the resistor leads to fit the hole spacing. I use my needle nose pliers rather than my fingers to form the leads. This results in a nice neat bend. Next I insert the leads in the holes. Note the orientation of the stripes on the resistor. Call me obsessive compulsive if you will, but I like all the components oriented in the same direction. Now I'll solder the leads. I put a little solder on the iron chip to renew the tinning, then hold it against one of the connections. After it heats up, I add a little more solder and keep the iron in place until the solder flows. I use the same process for the other connection. To trim the leads, I use my diagonal cutters to cut each lead flush with the solder joint don't cut into the solder. When you cut the lead, it will go flying unless you hold it or put a finger on it. Closely examine the joints to make sure they are all good. Next I will solder a 14 pin integrated circuit or IC onto the circuit board. Sometimes it will be necessary to bend the leads to get them to fit through the holes in the circuit board and it is not uncommon for one of the pins to fold under the IC rather than go through the hole. So watch closely as you insert it. This one fits in place with no problems. To keep the IC in place while it is being soldered, I bend a couple of pins on the copper side. I bend the pin in one corner of the IC and another pin diagonally opposite it. I prep the soldering iron tip by wiping it on a damp sponge or rag and then freshen the tinning with a small amount of solder. I will solder the two bent pins first. I hold the tip of the iron against the pin of the IC and the copper pad and allow it to heat up for a second, then I let a small amount of solder flow into the joint. You want just enough solder to form a small cone from the copper pad to the lead of the IC. Too little solder and you'll have a void in the joint, too much solder and you'll have a round blob instead of a cone shape, or worse yet, a short to the next pin. Solder the two bent pins, then check that the IC is sitting flush against the board. If necessary, heat one of the two joints up while pressing down on the IC. Once it looks good, solder the remaining pins. Hopefully when you finish soldering the IC, your solder joints will look a bit better than this. 
In this still shot, you can see the bad solder joints more clearly. There is a void around one of the IC pins, a solder bridge between two other pins, and one of the resistor leads has too much solder. Finally, this sketch illustrates several solder joints. You can see the cone shape you are striving for on the left. The other views show typical bad solder joints. It takes a little practice to get it right, but it isn't all that difficult to learn. Find more how-to information and travel videos on our blog site at www.justalittlefurther.com or on our website at www.nineofcups.com.